So, uh, Letha, tell me about yourself and just like um, your background personally, like before you got into this profession. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I had a crazy childhood, and uh, my mom ended up out here in Alabama, and so I uh, needed her help. So I came out here to Alabama. She was actually near Auburn, so I was going to go to college down there, and that was what I had in my head. Um, but that's not what happened. I ended up in human resources. I started off in staffing. So I was in staffing, uh, staffing companies, so we would hire and fire for, you know, short-term positions. Uh, I worked my way up through that. I ended up um, as a recruiter for much larger companies like BE&K and, and Brassville and Gorey. Uh, then I got recruited out for contracts. So I did the merger for AT&T and Singular and then uh, Regions and AM South, things like that. And then the government noticed me and they pulled me into um, the explosives industry. So I took an early retirement after I got hurt in 2004. And I, I spent about eight years not working at all. And then I wanted, I wanted to do something uh, with myself. And my buddy had a tent shop, needed a little help at tax time. I just thought it'd be fun, uh, keep me out of the house. And turns out I liked it and there was good money and hadn't looked back. So that's kind of how that went. Um, yeah. You still uh, cool with that person that helps you out? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've got a uh, gentleman's agreement, non-compete. Uh, he's in Pell City. Okay. Our agreement is to be 30 miles from each other's shop. Uh, I'm now a franchise. So uh, we've got locations in Auburn here and Palestine, Texas. Um, I'll never infringe upon our handshake agreement. Nothing's on paper. Uh, we shook hands and smiled and that was it. And um, it just recently he, he you know, called and was like, hey, I, I short ordered a film. I, I've got a customer here. I need some a windshield done. And so I sent my son with the film and you know, helped him make sure his customer was happy. Oh yeah, great relationship with my mentor. Okay, Kaden, so tell me about yourself, you know, how old you are and just how you got into what you're doing now. Well, I guess some background for you. Yeah, let's see. I'm uh, I'm right at 18. I graduated high school last year. Uh, I really didn't like how tedious window tent was. It's it's a lot of a lot of focus. You got to really <laughs> dial in to do it and it it's just not for me. So, we was at a competition and I really figured like I stand over to the side, kind of be away from everybody, not trying to be seen and you know, looked at. So I'm standing over to the side and they're wrapping this car and I think it's the coolest thing ever. So I'm sitting there staring at them for like a solid four hours. And in that four hours, they managed to wrap a whole Dodge Charger. It's like 2017, one of the newer ones. They wrapped the whole car, top to bottom, in like four hours. Wow. I was absolutely amazed. Once we came back home, I, I needed to do that. So yeah. that's been never looked back, really. Do you think it was like a form of destiny you being there and seeing that? Probably. It was, yeah. Probably because it wasn't. They didn't even advertise that they was gonna be rapping. It was a tent competition. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with rap. Yeah. And they was just doing their daily job in the back of the warehouse. I happened to walk back there. Gotcha. It was cool. Did you have other plans or some message you wanted to do before you started doing that? Uh, I was wanting to be a welder. I did go welding school in high school. Got my certificate. Got certified to weld and all that. I just, just never really pursued that. Yeah, I mean, it's something you can fall back on. Yeah, really for sure. Interested in it again. Um, so, um, where did the, um, do you guys have different business names for what you do, or is it just combined together? Right now, it's combined. Okay, so tell me about the name. Like, where did the name come from of the business? I guess, Letha, you can ask. Oh, uh, yeah, the Tent <laughs> Diva. So when I was learning, when I was up in Pell City, uh, one of our benefits was that we could bring one customer a week that was our friend, whatever. We named the price, we just pay him for the film. And so we called that the Tent Diva Special because it was just two girls that attended for him. So it was the Tent Diva Special. So when I moved on, it just it stuck. Everybody had you know, already nicknamed me as the Tent Diva. You, you could wait till she had time and you could get a better deal. So... I just kept it. It gotcha. started as a nickname. Okay, gotcha. So, do you remember your first job that you did, the first uh, car you tended? Do you remember that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't remember the first one that I did, the first vehicle that I tended while I was training, 
but I absolutely remember the first one I did on my own. So my mentor um, took these days where he was just exhausted. He wouldn't get out of bed. And uh, me and my coworker had driven over an hour to get to work. So we wanted to work. And so this Nissan Altima came in and I told my coworker, I'm gonna tint this Altima. And she says, if, if you waste the film, we're gonna be in trouble. And I said, no, if I waste the film, I'm gonna pay for the film, but I can do this. The, a normal tent job takes about two hours. Um, this tent job took us about four hours, but we did not have to remove a window. We did sell it, and instead of getting in trouble, we got a high five. So um, we, we did that quite a few times. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay, do, do you remember the first uh, thing you wrapped? First ever thing I wrapped? Yeah. Uh, in training or like actual making uh, money, like at, at the business? Money. Uh, first money job would be, I think it was Scott Pruitt, wasn't it? Yes. It's a, uh, uh, or Robert Allen Mustang GT. Oh, I did, wow. uh, no, I did, he just wanted the hood. It was the first thing I ever did. I did a matte black hood on a gloss black car. Okay. And then the next thing I did was an avalanche. I did the whole, the whole avalanche. That baby blue that we was actually messing with, I did that. The whole car was that color. That's a big. Oh, it was a big job, yeah. It yeah. took first place at the car show as well. Yeah, really? it took yeah up in Talladega. Okay. He went took it to a car show. He got a trophy for that one. And that was the second thing you. Yeah, that was my you second ever job. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Then you got the fleet with Robert Allen. Yeah, I did a bunch of commercial vehicles for a flooring company in town. Okay. A bunch for him. Okay. Yep. So do you feel like um, I know it hasn't been that long since your first job. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you have? Progressed, or do you? Oh yeah, for sure. Differently since the first ones you did. Oh, I I feel like I've definitely progressed, cause uh, the first one, I mean I, I mean anybody in a in a specific industry, they they know what they're doing better than the customer knows what they're doing. So I mean, looking back on it, there's a couple things I could have done. I could have right. tidied up the corners a little bit. You know what I mean? Small stuff, yeah. but for the most part, yeah, yeah. I think I've definitely advanced. Tell him about the that the hood on Scott Pruitt's of how the biggest piece of material on vinyl is 60 inches, but that hood oh, was yeah, over yeah. that. So yeah, that, that without the training, job, you wouldn't have been able to even do the job. Yeah, that first job I ever did on that Mustang, the hood was, I think it was 68 inches, and the biggest they make a roll is right at 60. So I had to turn it sideways and literally go at it sideways and then stretch it and turn it and make it go but it came out, look, it looked straight, but I had to do it sideways. It was scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, that was a learning experience. Yep. You know how to do that next time. <laughs> for sure. Yep. So uh, this is a question for both of you. Like At this point, do you believe that this is like your purpose or your passion in life that you're doing right now? Or is that what you want to answer first? Absolutely, I believe it's my purpose and passion. Um, and it's, it's very ironic because when I was when I was younger in my career, especially in my mid twenties, my idea of success was the person with the big house and the big car. I lived in Birmingham. Everybody's driving all this nice stuff, so I went and did what everybody else was doing. I was twenty one. I bought a hundred thousand dollar house over on Grant's Mill Road, right? You know, my back backyard's Brookwood. You know, my front yard's Irondale. I'm thinking I'm doing everything right, but what I was doing was living in debt. And that's all I did was go from debt to debt to debt. So at 22, I bankrupted on over $100,000, I'm sorry, over $200,000 worth of debt in my 20s to start over. Um, I learned a very big lesson in that, you know, I didn't need all that stuff. Um, so the second go around of having the ability um, to, to go and, and get things that I want, um, I don't do it that way. I look for people that need a hand up that need a need. Uh, we use this platform here to talk to people about God every single day. Um, God drug me out of the mess I created. I went from working in corporations to get myself in trouble. So I've been to prison twice in two different states. Um, that percentage, Lee, eight out of 10 are gonna return and they're not gonna have a successful life. I am that small percentage. Then not only do I have a good life, but I look out for the other inmates. So one of the things we do here at this shop we accept donations uh, for whites and books for our local county jail. Our program's called PB&J, Panties, Bras, and Jail. Um, these ladies go in and they're not able to get whites, um, especially if they're not a local, uh, have a local family. 
Uh, so we have a program that goes through the chaplain um, after 60 days in, aired and I figured out what the problem was. We we're trying to solve that problem. That's a, just a small tidbit of things that, that we do to give back. But I remember what that felt like. Um, my children are open to tell me what I made them feel like when I was going through the craziness. And so we look to, to help that so that, you know, help ease that, so to speak. So, yes, I do believe that this is my platform and calling. Um, whether it uh, continues in this manner, whether it, it changes more of giving back. Um, our needs are always met, so we, we look to seek others' needs. So. Right. So, generally speaking, you can say that, do you feel like this profession kind of keeps you from going back into that type of a lifestyle, getting into trouble? Absolutely, this profession stops me from getting in trouble. Absolutely. Uh, when I broke my spine in 2004, um, I always like, you know, it, there was it working in corporate and having federal uh, security clearances and all this, you, you can't get too far off of the white line or you're going to be in trouble. So I was, for the most part, in between the white lines. However, I broke my spine and in 2004 they were, they were giving out tons of pills. So um, I got addicted to those, got DWI after DWI, one involving my children, which was of course a felony. Uh, then when the doctors want to slow down your medicine, then you end up on the street getting other things. So I got busted with cocaine. And uh, now I live in that same pain, but I don't take those medicines. I don't, I'm not a danger to myself or my children, and I was then. Um, I do go back into the institutions and the prisons as well. Uh, I like to encourage the women. Um, I go in and see the men as well. Um, but somehow men usually can get a pen pal. Women, it's a little different. It's hard for them, uh, and they get left there by themselves a lot. So, gotcha. Gotcha. yeah. Okay, same question. Do you feel like this is your passion in life? I mean, you got a lot of time. Yeah, to for get sure. Inside, but right now, do you feel like this I've is done a I've done a lot of careers. I mean, I'm only 18, but I've I've remodeled houses. I've been a I've been a welder. I've raced dirt track cars. I mean, I've I've tinted cars. I've wrapped cars. It's honestly the most fun that I've ever had, and I've I've got to talk to more people in this industry than in any other industry. Uh, I definitely say it's it's if it's not my passion, then it's a it's a close second because it's it's right there at my passion for sure. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, it's definitely made you a good bit of money, hadn't it, Bub? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know many kids that are 18 years old and they're a business owner and they own their own <laughs> land outright. They got over 20 bands in a vehicle, own it outright. I don't know many 18 year olds that are that way. <laughs> so do you, um, if there was something that you could go back and tell yourself when you first started that you know now as advice, um, it can be related to the uh, industry or just in general in life. Is it anything that you would advise you would give yourself? At a younger age, mm. I know you ain't that old, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I say honestly, probably just be persistent. Yeah. Just like if you're gonna set a goal, just don't set another goal on top of that goal. Finish that goal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you if you got a goal and you you want to get this one car wrapped. You gotta get that car wrapped before you get to the next one. Don't just keep setting goals, because before you know it, you'll be overwhelmed in goals and you, you never even met your first goal. Right. That's probably my biggest biggest thing. Gotcha. Okay, same question. Yeah, I would go back and tell myself it's, it's just a vehicle and if you mess it up, you've got insurance. Because I get stressed <laughs> out. Uh, I prefer the houses, the businesses, and I prefer to be his helper and rap. When we paid the money for training, it's a, it's a short amount of time, and they, they shoot a lot of information at you. I didn't catch on, so I let him run with it. He likes it. He was catching on. He was doing great, so let him run with it. So my thing is not, I, I would tell myself not to stress out so bad. These days, he, he'll remind me when I'm getting out of whack, and I'll, I'll walk off and take a breather, but... The truth is, there's no reason to get my blood pressure up. We're, if we make a mistake, we're gonna fix it. If, if, if don't come off right, we're gonna yank the material start again. It ain't that crucial. That's what I would tell myself, is to chill out, you know? Because I can't say I enjoyed the first few years of me tenting. 
Um, during my mess, my family took my son, my, my brother's pretty well to do, and um, so he sued me for my parental rights in open court. And um, so I was, I was literally working myself to death in order to get the money to be able to go back and get my son home. So I can't say I enjoyed the first couple of years, um, and I do regret that because it's an enjoyable job. And, and that, was, that, that was me being my own problem because it, I was stressing myself out. Um, I also would tell myself to walk away when you're overwhelmed. Um, I can redo a window four times and never get it right and keep seeing my same mistake and not be able to get it. But if I walk off and take a breather and come back, I might tag it on the first go. Um, you know, it just, you just don't let it overwhelm you. But I did at first for sure. I guess we can just touch on what services you, you guys offer. I don't think we discussed that yet. That's just right. about what, you, what all you do. Okay. So here at the Tent Diva, we, um, we're a performance shop. So any product we carry is going to be a performing product. If we can't warranty it, we won't carry it. So um, our home films are lifetime. They You can either get extreme privacy or you can get a little privacy and then all heat rejection. We carry them in a couple different lines. Um, we do cars as well, a few cars and trucks. We do equipment, um, and we wrap vehicles. Um, so we do the advertising wraps, the full color change, um, things like this. Uh, you can dress up your vehicle with this as much, you know, as little or as much as you'd like. Um, for my company truck, I've got a camo designed hood. Um, it's not a whole lot to add that little accent piece, but it gets attention all over town, and everybody realizes it's us. Um, so, but that's mainly what, that's what we do. We, uh, homes, businesses, vehicles, equipment, and wrap jobs. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else? What, what would you say to, uh, potential customers, you know, to, um, the reason why they should come to you guys instead of going to somewhere that, what sets your work apart other than what you already mentioned? I believe the biggest part is the transparency. Window tent is a gray area, so there are not a lot of restrictions on your tenor. There's no law that says they have to give you a certain product. There's no law that says they have to uh, warranty it or anything like that. So we go over and above. We set the standard. We've got a $1 million general contractor policy. We are full-blown general contractor. Uh, we stand behind our work 100%. Um, there's times that we know the customer broke the rule and rolled the window down. We don't care. We will fix it because we want whomever you see later to know that was our work and it's done properly. So um, for us, we, we set a gold standard. So uh, with other shops, um, there's not really anyone to call or complain to if the shop owner isn't going to help you. Um, with us, that's, that's completely opposite. Um, our warranty has our manufacturer information on it. Our manufacturer has other distributors in our area. Let's say it was personal and the customer just didn't like me. Well, that's fine. You're still warrantied and you still can get your film redone with no cost to you. That other shop's right up the street. In fact, I'll call and make the appointment for you. It's no problem. So we just kind of set a standard here where the customer knows they're taken care of and they know we've got their back. Um, and that's, that's just uh, for us is a standard. Uh, we remember being customers and quite frankly, no one educated me on when to film. I never even knew what shade of film I was getting. I dropped my vehicle off and paid them the money and came back and got it and got what I got and didn't throw a fit. And I didn't like that. So we kind of go about that an opposite way here. Gotcha. What percentage is the do? Yeah, absolutely. We carry every shade of film that is made in a uh, performance film. So we carry 70%, which is almost clear. So a lot of our older customers love that, even on their homes. Um, you can see straight through it. It gives no shade to it at all, but it's going to reject 75% heat. So for a car, that's about 40 degrees lower in your cabin temperature. And for a home, that's up to 170 degrees lower coming through your window. Um, then we also carry 50%, 35%, 20%, 15%, and 5%. So between clear and all the way to blackout, we've got every option in between. How would uh, someone get in touch with you if they want to book you? 
Absolutely. If you'd like to reach us, we are available on Facebook, Google. Um, we are looking into a couple of other things like Angie's List and things like this for the home market. And we will be doing shows for uh, the home shows like in Birmingham and things like this. Um, you can Google us. There are videos of us tending live out there. Um, we, we have participated in uh, two years in a row of tenor battles. Um, and so all those live videos are out there so you can actually see us in action and you can see us amongst our peers. Um, we are what's called a celebrity tent shop because we're recognized nationally and we do compete nationally. Um, that's what kind of things are behind us. Uh, we are a GAP certified shop as well. That means that Sheriff Tent Right has pulled up unannounced and certified that our window film is being laid properly and would be to the customer's satisfaction.